creating a sprite sheet in Unreal using the sequencer and whichever 3D model you'd like is actually quite easy. I'll show you how to set that up. I'm going to assume you know how to create a new Unreal project. This is an empty project with uh, an empty level that I've just created here. I've just called the level the stage and I've gone and added the UE4 mannequin from the Epic Marketplace to this project. You can find that if you go to the Marketplace and search for the UE4 mannequin mobile. Once you've purchased it here from the store, it's free. You can add it to any of your projects from the library tab underneath the vault. There'll be a button that says add to project. It's for older versions of the Unreal Engine, but it still works with UE5. With the mannequin added in, I've just taken the skeletal mesh for the mannequin and added it into this scene. As you can see, I've got no lighting. So I'm also going to add a directional light and a skylight as well. Directional light by default is a bit dark, is a bit bright when you've got nothing else in the background. So I'm going to turn down its brightness. I'm just going to turn up the um, indirect lighting from the skylight a little as well. So we've got a 3D model here in the middle of our scene, and we're going to position a camera to view it, an object to rotate, and a level sequence to capture all of that so that we end up panning our camera around our model, taking an image of it every single frame, generating 36 images, one every 10 degrees of rotation. Next, I'm just going to go to the Place Actors window. I'm going to take a post-process volume and place that into the scene so that we can remove motion blur. If we want still images, we don't want Unreal blurring everything for us. So drop in a post-process volume, set it so that it's infinite extent is checked. This means you don't need to cover your model. You can just dump the post process anywhere in the level and it'll still work. And then in here we can also find motion blur and we can enable amount and maximum and set them both to zero. Zero amount of motion blur, zero maximum motion blur. Next, we will want to enable a specific plugin, the Render Movie Queue, which will allow us additional options when rendering out our images at the end. And we will also need to set a specific setting in our project settings, which will allow us to use an alpha as an output. So first of all, go to Edit, Plugins, and in Plugins, you want to search for the Render Movie Queue. And it's this option here, Render Movie Queue, uh, the third one down I've got. When you check this box, you'll have to restart the engine to uh, enable the plugin. Once you've done that, go to your project settings. And if you search in your project settings, which is edit project settings, you can look, search for post process. And you want this option here underneath post processing, enable alpha channel support in post processing, switch this to allow through tone mapper. You'll have to restart the engine once you've set that, and it can take a while because it has to recompute all of the engine shaders once you've done that. Now we need a camera and something to control our object as we rotate it in front of the camera. So I'm just going to place the mannequin. This could be whichever model you want to take the pictures of, obviously. Set that to zero for world origin, just so we know where it is. I'm going to put a cube into the scene and drop that in directly onto world origin as well. And I'm going to set the cubes uh, rendering to being invisible so we can't see it. That way it won't ruin our shot. And then I'm going to place a cine camera actor into the scene and point that at my at my character. Tweak the camera angle to be set up however you'd like it for rotating around your character. Just try and set the location to make sure that it's nice and central and a good predictable value in both X and Y so that when you rotate your character your, your uh, images will still look viable from all angles. Make sure none of it clips outside of the angle of the camera's viewport. Speaking of rotating the character, whereas this is a skeletal mesh here that I'm using currently, if you were using a static mesh for, a, say, a spaceship or some other character, and you we, this is the image that you wanted this is the mesh that you wanted to take your images of. Uh, static meshes, you would need to make sure they are set to movable for the next step to work here in the details panel. So just make sure they're set to movable, otherwise you won't be able to rotate them and take these images of them. In the meantime, center your character out again. 
and this time in your outliner drag your character and drop it onto the invisible cube that we placed into this scene so you can use the cube as an anchor. I'm actually going to re rename this the rotation cube so that next time I come back to this project I actually remember what things are. And the reason I've set it up this way, rather than rotating the mesh we're going to rotate the cube because it means we can come back, open up this project and drop in any other meshes, any other characters or animations that we want and we just need to swap around the mannequin for whichever our new mesh is and we don't need to touch any of the rest of the scene it will all still be set up and work. We're going to take the cube which is invisible and when we rotate that our character will now rotate because it's a child actor of the cube. With the camera in place, the lighting in place and our rotational cube acting as our handle to control our character's rotation next thing we want to do is set up the actual sequence for the rotation itself head up here to the movie clapperboard and add a level sequence I'm going to call this one the sprite rotation sequence and that'll add a uh, level sequence to your current level in here there are two ways to add the cube to the sequence you can either find it in your outliner and drag it and drop it or you can click add track and choose an actor from the drop down list here once you've got the cube here in the level sequence we're going to want to add animation frames to its your rotation that's its z angle rotation so right now it's currently has no rotation so that's going to be our very first frame click here to add a keyframe to the your rotation at zero the next keyframe is going to be at 36 frames in we're going to add a keyframe at 360 degrees and by, we, we have to make one further change to that. Can you see how each frame here, they're not perfect. Uh, so five frames in, we should be at 50 degrees, but we're at 18.9. It's attempting to ease between these two values. If instead you select both of them, right, uh, right click on them, sorry, select both of these frames, right click on them and choose linear as the interpolation method. Now for each frame, you'll be moving your yaw angle by exactly 10 degrees so with just two keyframes you have all 360 degrees of movement. So with the keyframe set up now we're just going to select the last frame of our animation right click on the timeline and set end time. It'll actually set the end time just before the penultimate frame which is kind of what we want here because we already have one frame facing directly forwards zero degrees we actually don't need the 36th frame with 360 degrees facing forwards here so you can now click play and test this your character should rotate almost all the way around so that when you build your sprite sheet you do have 360 degrees of rotation visible before we can start the render us itself we're going to add a clipping layer to this actor so that it is the only thing in the scene which is actually rendered out from our movie we don't want to include any of the background um, so if you select the actor go to your layers tab right click and create uh, add selected actors to new layer and I'm just going to call this the clipping layer the next step is to head over to the render queue and actually to create the rendered images themselves which we can use to make our sprite sheet to do that head down to the clapperboard here in sequencer and just click to add this sequence to the movie render queue. Of course, there's one thing left to do before you can actually render your animation, and that's tell your sequence which camera to use. So in your level, make sure you've got your level sequence open, and here inside the level sequence, add a track, add actor to sequencer, choose your cine camera actor. Now when you press play, you should be able to watch what's happening from the perspective of the camera itself should also be pointed out if you're comfortable fiddling with the camera settings and tweaking the exposure rates and frame rates you can do that now make sure that your shot is set up exactly how you'd like it before you render it for the actual render head to the render movie render queue select the level sequence that you've just created and go to make sure it's the only one you've got active you can queue up a number of jobs here if you'd like to but i'm only doing one at a time and open up its config by default you will only have the jpeg here not the png sequence you'll want to disable the jpeg go into settings and click um to enable the uh, PNG output here in the settings list. That's because PNGs have that alpha channel, which you will want to make sure is enabled. That'll enable your images to have a transparent background so you can create a decent sprite sheet from them. 
In your rendering settings, make sure that your accumulator includes alpha. This will allow you to make use of the settings we changed earlier and actually include alpha channels in your render. And then come down to the actor layers here. And what you're going to want to do is add an element to this array and make sure that the clipping layer that we selected earlier is set up here. So that'll look like this. You add and then select your clipping layer. That's the one that we added the actor to earlier. And with that done, you can come down to the bottom here and just click Render Local. And it should compile the shaders for a second. And then render out one frame for each frame of your rotation. Et voila! Lots of sprites, ready to be assembled into a sprite sheet using whichever software or method you prefer. Being particularly lazy, I like this website here. qt.xyz forward slash sprite sheet. You can simply take your images, drag them and drop them into the website. And if your images are too large, it will give you a warning. But assuming that they are of a reasonable resolution, it'll then chunk away for a few seconds and populate a nice sprite sheet for you. All in the same order that the image numbers are dropped into. Before you um, do this, though, make sure you set up your columns and rows width and height to suit whichever project you're working on. Enjoy. So here is a 3D sprite rendered in Unreal, now being drawn in Game Maker 2. How's that for a messed up pipeline?